Hello everyone, it is Justice, and today I'm going to be talking about the Onion Skin Journal. I've tried to record this a few times in my normal style where I kind of show some footage and then I actually just voice over, but I can't seem to get all of the words out that I want. So we're going to kind of do this stream of conscious style, different mic, because we're going directly from my camera. Let's do this. So first off, I have covered the Ouroboros on the front of the snake eating itself with some stickers. So very sorry you won't be able to see that. The side says volume one, the onion skin journal, and it is metallic. So as you show it in the light, it does shine. And I do have to say, I love that it is gold and not silver. I have a certain thing. I really dislike silver accents. So I really do have to give my appreciation for that. The back has nothing on it, and both covers are hard, which I also do appreciate. One thing that I would like to note while we are on the outside, there is no band. So there's no band for you to secure the book with, and if the creator of the Onion Skin Journal is watching this, that is some feedback I would love to give. Please give an option with a band. I understand that it was probably a stylistic choice since this looks kind of like an old-timey book that you can store on a shelf, but I would really love the option for it to have an elastic band on the, on the edges because I think a lot of the audience that is going to be using this are the same people that use like Leuchterms and like Hobonichis and Traveler's Company's notebooks and things like that where we are so used to having it be able to be secured in the bag. And for a book that is kind of marketed towards adventurers and people wanting to document their journeys, I think that it is very important to have something to secure it in a bag. That way it doesn't fling open and crinkle all of the pages. So one thing to note there, I'm not going to show the inside of the front cover because I have written personal details on it, but inside it's a creamy tan paper, very splooshy looking. It kind of feels like blot paper. And then here I wrote on both sides so that you can see kind of what it looks like. I will not be writing on both sides. This is way too difficult for me to read back and that's totally fine. I did not buy this book with the anticipation of being able to write on both sides, not at all. The paper itself, once you get towards the edges, it's a little bit crinkled, but actually inside, it's completely fine. Whenever I first got my book, I was a little bit worried about that part because I was like, oh no, why are they wrinkly already? But it's just whenever you get to the edge of these signatures, you'll get a few wrinkly pages and it's not that bad. And the glory of the paper, I sure wish my animals would stop walking around so I can try to do this ASMR thing. It's very crisp. And so that you can see some of the writing in it, I've decided to only write on the right side of the page. I'm completely ignoring the left. As far as inks go, it's pretty okay for fountain pen inks. You can get a little bit of shine and sparkle if you're using sheening or sparkling inks, but not an awful lot. I don't even know if you can see it, but this is Emerald of Shavor by Jay Urbine. And this is just a diamine document black. You can still see some of the glitter and then right at the very front where you can start using the ink and it kind of pools because it's drier, you can see a little bit of the red sheen there. But it doesn't really play off of more delicate inks. So that is one thing to note. It has to be a super sheener essentially or you're not really gonna get a whole lot out of it. And again, that is completely fine with me. I did not buy this with the anticipation that it is going to be super duper ink friendly. Now, one thing I did want to say is that it does not bleed with my fountain pen inks unless I'm using an ink that I already know is finicky and in a bold nib. 
Um, I don't. I can't find the page that it was on, but I had a, I think it was a medium nib with the Noodler's Lexington Gray. And I already know that ink to kind of spread a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily suggest going in with inks that you know are troublesome. And then we also have the ribbon. The ribbon is a regular ribbon, really nothing outstanding or weird about it. It does have the little V cut at the end. I kind of think that I will burn this with a lighter a little bit because I do see it unfurling. Oh, and another thing to note. It comes with a little piece of paper that kind of has what looks like college ruled lines and then a dot grid on the back. So whenever you place it underneath each sheet, you can see where you're going and it's incredibly clear. So if you're worried about your eyesight or anything and being able to see the lines, it's really a non-issue. I have had this for a few weeks now and I've gotten maybe this far, which to me feels like a lot because it took me an entire year to feel my last journal. So I'm kind of happy with this. I do think that it will probably last me the remainder of the year just because I do know myself and I putter out, but I'm kind of excited. So paper is really nice. It's really fun. It's more for the novelty aspect of it for me. For $42, I don't believe that it's going to be for everyone, but I really do like it. Um, I'm someone that typically uses like Tomoe River paper and Hobonichis and things like that. So I love a thin paper to get me through the day. So this is exactly up my alley. I was kind of talked into it by myself because a few of the YouTubers that I watch, so Anna of Girl and Quill and also Adventure Denali, they both talked about the Onion Skin Journal, and once I saw that, I kind of had to get my hands on it as well. So here we are. If you really like thin papers and you're kind of in the market to try out something new, I would absolutely encourage it. If you're kind of on the fence, maybe wait a little bit, but it is a very nice book. You kind of have to know what you're getting into in order to enjoy it, I think, because I can see where a lot of people would not enjoy this. And I'm thinking of that as the people that use the Archer and Olive paper or the Amanda Rachel Lee paper. People that use those journals, I don't believe that this is your market. But if you're wanting to try out thin paper and get that crinkly goodness, maybe give it a shot. Anyways, I am very glad that you decided to join me in this video and Please feel free to ask any questions you may have. I'm certain that I've forgotten things because I have with every other take of this, but I'm happy to answer. And I hope that you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.